Hello everybody and welcome to my guide for the Oryx Sanctuary. So I noticed that there is a lot of people that are having trouble with this dungeon. And it is supposed to be the hardest dungeon in the game, but it's honestly not as bad as you think once you learn it. The guide is going to consist of six parts. One for the preparation, one for each miniboss, and one for Oryx himself. So let's get started. To start off, I want to talk about the preparation. First of all, we're gonna have to change some settings before we even start playing the game. The first thing we need to change is the transparency value. If you're a newer player, you might not know this, but it's possible to get below 50% transparency, which makes dodging a lot easier since you will actually be able to see the shots. The way you change your transparency below 50% is by going to your start menu, typing in registry editor, you then want to right click on it and run as administrator, uh, press yes on this prompt it gives you. Uh, right here you want to type in this. Uh, I will leave it in the description below and I will also put it on the screen. Uh, you then want to press enter. Scroll all the way down and find transparency value underscore h. Uh, double click this. Then you change the last two numbers to whatever transparency value you want. So. I would recommend 10%, which is the numbers I just had, which are 2440. 20, 2440. Um, when you're done, uh, press OK and exit out of the registry editor. The way you know it worked is if you go to gameplay and opacity and you see it's 10%. Uh, be careful not to change this slider because then it's going to mess it all up and you'll have to do the registry editor all over again so yeah keep this at where it is leave that up leave that be uh, then you want to turn off guild members and locked players this basically means makes it so that you can see guild members and locked players which is fairly nice you also want to go to video uh, scroll down to quality on particles master turn it off and particle effect uh, put it on low. Also, draw game view shadows, turn this off completely. This is just going to help with performance, so that way you don't lag spike in the middle of O3. Also, for text bubbles, I would recommend turning this off because uh, eventually you're going to run into someone that types in the middle of an O3 and you are going to suffer because of it so yeah just leave this off it it will save you in the long run lastly ally shoot should be on hide all and you can also turn off ally summons if you want to when you're choosing a class for oryx 3 there are three main categories healing classes mobility classes and tanky classes they all have their pros and cons so you have to choose the one that fits you the best Healing classes can make up for a low level healing pet, and they also have really long range to stay at a safe distance from the boss. But they also have a very low base speed, so you're gonna have to max your speed stat or carry a snake eye ring. Next up is mobility classes. These classes have an easier time running away from Oryx when he's chasing you, and they also do not need maxed speed in order to be effective, because they can use their ability to run away. Because these classes don't have inbuilt healing and have to rely on other classes to get heals, I would only suggest playing these classes if your healing pet is above level 60. They also have quite a bit lower range than Priest and Necro, so that might make things more dangerous. Last up is the tanky classes. These classes have the benefit of being able to survive more shots than most other classes, but they need maxed speed or a snake eye ring to be effective, and they also have very low range. My top picks are going to be Priest and Necro for their amazing heals and long range, and Ninja because of its versatility with speedy and also having decent range. Once you've chosen your class, uh, let's talk about gear. So as a rule of thumb, you should never bring anything you don't want to lose into or Oryx 3 because you will lose it. <laughs> no matter how good you are, you are going to die. That is just the way O3 is. So. I would recommend bringing wine cellar tops, 
Uh, you could even go one tier lower, T T11, T5, T12, and T4. Uh, these can eas easily be obtained from other players selling them on like Realm Eye and stuff. Or if you just ask like your friends, they will probably give it to you. Next up is uh, <laughs> healings. Uh, you can see I have a lot of he health potions and icors. Icors are really nice because they give 150 HP, which means if you heal with two of these, it's basically the same as using three HP potions. So bringing icors is really good, and you should always bring some. Uh, icors drops from spider dance and crawling depths, but uh, just farming spider dance is probably the easiest and fastest way to find them. When looking for spider dance, the quickest way to find them is to teleport to godlands and walk to the edge. You will see this dull green grass. Um, if you continue walking further, you will eventually get to like the edge of this green grass where it starts turni turning greener. And this is the best place to find spider dance. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. When you're in the spider den, uh, look for any chests and also kill every spider that is not green. Also be on the lookout for chests that are very close to the wall. They're very hard to see, so you might miss them. Yeah, just replace any normal HP potions you have with die cores. And finally, kill the boss for some extra icors. Uh, last up is the snake eye ring. Many people don't <laughs> bring one and they end up nexusing because of it. Like, snake eye ring is such a good swap in because if Oryx ever gets near you, you can just swap it on, press your ability, and just zoom away. So, yeah, snake eye ring is very easy to get just from a snake pit, so very helpful to bring in. Next up is your stats. Um, I'm currently on an 8-8. It's fine to bring an 8-8 as long as you're willing to Nexus. And that's honestly the way I would recommend you play. Just go into Oryx and be, be prepared to Nexus anytime you don't feel comfortable. This will save you so much time in the long run. I've heard a lot of people say to themselves like, Oh, I'm I don't care about this character. I'm just I just want to learn O3. But no, you end up wasting so much time from just half-assed maxing some characters and not really trying. Play play as if this was your main character. Don't don't go in there thinking this character has to die for me to learn O3. No. The time it takes for you to get into another run after your nexus is so much quicker than actually remaxing a character, so keep that in mind. Although, that being said, you don't need an 8-8. Like, if you don't want to max your character, uh, you can skip out on attack, dexterity, vitality, wisdom, and mana. But speed, defense, and HP, those are so helpful. So, yeah, max speed, defense, and HP, if possible. This is just a quick tip. If you're ever popping a rune, it will eventually time out and drop in a bag on the floor. So when that happens, make sure you pick it up again. Otherwise it will despawn after like 30 seconds and you will lose your rune. Once you enter Oryx's castle, you'll be greeted by one out of four mini bosses. Besa, Gemspock, Dama, Luke. But before you can fight the mini bosses, you have to clear minions in the hallways and rooms leading up to the mini boss. As a general rule of thumb, be very careful walking up into the next room when clearing minions, because there's a lot of enemies that will jump on top of you and kill you faster than you can react. What I do when I push up is I look at my minimap constantly, because the vision on your minimap is longer than your actual vision, and you'll also be able to see enemies that would otherwise be hiding behind walls. Looking at your minimap just stops stupid stuff like this happening. Oh, three. What's he talking about? You. What? You. What? Five people just got insta-popped. Um, yeah. 
With that being said, let's get into the mini bosses. First up on our list, and probably the easiest mini boss, is gonna be Chief Basin. The reason I say it's the easiest mini boss is because you don't really need to know a whole lot about the boss fight in order to complete it. The Chief Basin fight is literally you see boss, you shoot boss. Pesa comes close, you run away. But with that being said, I'm still gonna go over some things that you should know before you enter the boss fight. Throughout the whole fight, Beza is gonna throw out these green banners that will silence you if you stand close to them. Just keep this in mind, because you don't want to be relying on your ability and suddenly dying because you're standing on a green banner. You will also throw out a big banner in the middle sometimes. This means the silence is global and you'll be silenced no matter where you stand. If you ever deal enough damage to Beza in some phases, he will sometimes fall to the ground and be staggered. If you ever see this happen, you should move up to him and deal as much damage as you can, because he won't be attacking until he stands up again. After a stagger phase, he will be invulnerable for 15 seconds, so after a stagger phase you can just move away from him and focus on dodging. Once Besa hits 70% HP, he will spawn a second set of minions called Falconeers. The Falconeers aren't that dangerous in and of themselves, but they will periodically throw out falcons all across the map, which are really dangerous. Whenever you move across the map, you need to watch out for these because they shoot out a shotgun towards nearby players, dealing 300 to 400 damage, and eventually they'll explode into a ring of shots, killing you instantly if you stand too close. I've seen more 8-8s getting popped by these birds than I've seen people die from Besa, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> For most of the Besa fight, you want to position yourself in one of these four corners. Don't stand too close to the walls because this will leave you no space to dodge. There is also a much higher chance of you getting cornered by Besa if you stand close to the walls. Whenever Besa comes into your corner, or the corner just becomes cluttered with too many shots, minions or falcons, just move over to the next corner, but be careful when you cross over because there's often going to be a lot of shots or minions, and you don't want to walk over those. So whenever you need to cross, try and do it as early as possible to avoid getting into a bad situation. Once Besa hits 40% HP, he will spawn more minions called Assassins. These guys throw out green slowing shurikens, and you gotta make sure you really dodge these, because if Besa is chasing you and you're slowed, you either have to Nexus or you're dead. There's also a yellow Paralyzed Shuriken, same thing with this, if Besa is chasing you and you get hit by one of these, uh, you got a nexus. Another thing to be careful about are the knives that are flying around. These can easily stack up and deal a lot of damage, so try not to walk into knives too often. For example, here is a 3 stack dealing 600 damage if you walk into it. Not very nice. Last up is the final phase. He's gonna start to throw out swords that land on the ground and explode. Um, these aren't actually that dangerous, they only deal about 100 damage. So focus on dodging the green slowing shurikens and the big black wheels because these are the things that will kill you in the final phase. Next up on our list is Gemspock. He's pretty easy as long as you have healers and someone that can decoy. When you first enter the boss room, be very careful not to walk over this platform as Gemspock can teleport to it and one-shot you. Once you're inside the room, make your way over to the bottom left. Gemspock is going to start jumping around the room to all the different platforms, and it's gonna start shooting out lines of shots towards the nearest player or decoy. Eventually, Gemspock will jump back to middle and just stand there. This is one of his counter phases, and if you attack him here, he will weaken the whole group and just make the fight longer. Eventually though, you're gonna deal enough damage to him, and he's gonna spawn these circling coins in the middle. This is when you know you can damage him middle without getting a counter. Just continue chipping away at him. Eventually he's gonna jump middle and do his rotation phase. You can tell he's gonna do the rotation phase when he grabs into the portal like this, but even if you missed the animation, it's pretty easy to tell when the phase is happening. You're supposed to be rotating in this phase, but you can just stand in this safe spot and you can skip rotating. Just make sure that you leave early enough, so you're ready for when he starts teleporting again. You will also start changing up his attack patterns. Be careful about the yellow shots he shoots from the left platform, because these shots confuse you. Also keep in mind that throughout the whole fight, Gemspock is gonna throw bombs at you. 
These aren't that much of a trouble if you're in a big group with healers, but if you're in a smaller group, you want to actively try to dodge these. Oh, and by the way, the green one sickens. When you've dealt enough damage and Gemsbok hits 40% HP, he's gonna teleport to the middle and do his coin face. He's gonna throw out three coins, one of them is gonna blink and you're gonna have to keep track of this coin while he shuffles them. When he stops shuffling, you gotta kill the correct coin. If you didn't pay enough attention, just kill the coin that everyone else is attacking. Oh, and if you kill the wrong coin, the whole group gets slowed. This will make your job of surviving a lot harder. After coin phase, he starts teleporting around the room again, but this time you actually have to push him. If you're new to the fight, I recommend you just stay bottom left and leech like everybody else does, but once you get more comfortable with the fight, you can start moving around the room and pushing him. This next thing I'm gonna say is the most important thing to remember in the fight. You need to keep track of when coin phase has happened, because the next time he jumps middle is gonna be for his final phase. It is really important that you move as quickly as possible to top left or bottom right for final phase. If you stay bottom left, you will most likely have to nexus, or you will die. As long as you're standing top left or bottom right, uh, the final phase is actually really easy. Just focus on dodging the lines of bombs he shoots out, because if you get hit by the bombs, they're gonna armor break and sicken you. Third on the list is Dama. He can be very dangerous at first, but once you make it through the fight a few times, it's a very fair and consistent fight. When you first get into the boss room, Dama is gonna stand in the middle and have a speech. If anyone in the group shoots him during this speech, he's gonna do a counter. Don't be surprised if this happens. Uh, it's actually the opposite, you should be surprised if this doesn't happen. So when you get into Dama, always expect a second knife wall. And if you're one of the last people, uh, you need to rotate your screen by 180 degrees and be ready for a knife wall the moment you walk into the room. This here is the reason why you rotate your screen when you're late into the room. Not very good. So let's talk about how to actually complete the knife wall. When the phase first starts, you want to be as close to Dama as possible, but still far enough away that you can see the gaps and react in time. This is to give you as much space as possible to back away if you need it. First, find the gap in the knives. Wait till your character is right in the middle of the two rows of knives. Then hold your right or left button depending on where you're going to. And don't release it until you actually reach the next gap. When your character gets too close to the top knives, tap your down button just a tiny bit. It's much more important that you actually dodge the top knives because these have the hitbox on the very tip of the blade. Meanwhile, you can walk quite a fair distance into the backside of the blades. Once you reach the gap, it's very important that you move up. Otherwise, you will end up falling behind and reaching the back wall. And that's when you start to panic and things go wrong. Also, note that in some situations, just walking straight up through one row of knives might be more beneficial than walking all the way around. Oh, and also, never ever touch these side walls. Just touching these side knives will most likely deal 400 to 800 damage, and if you walk up, you're dead. You'll pretty much get one or two knife walls guaranteed each Dama, so it's very important that you actually learn how to do knife wall properly. And also note that if during any phase you deal too much damage, he will counter with a second knife wall. You can see when this happens because he falls over and starts flashing red. This means he's gonna do a second knife wall. After knife wall is completed, he's gonna choose from a few different phases, but you can pretty much just stand below him in all of them and be safe. The one on the bottom though, you wanna make sure you back out early enough so you don't get ran over by portals. Afterwards, he's gonna go into his rotation phase. If you want, you can go to one of the corners and leech, but it's not a bad phase at all. Just make sure you don't touch the tentacles and focus on these spears in the middle They'll do like a charge up and then quickly shoot out. You can pretty much ignore everything else in the face, as long as you're not walking into the tentacle and dodging the spears, you're chilling. After rotation phase comes the portal phase. The color of tentacles you got in rotation phase will determine which color of portal phase you're getting. The red portal phase is pretty easy, so you can just stay in and deal damage. 
However, the green portal face is worth going into more detail about. Basically, you're gonna have this huge green portal that's gonna chase the nearest player. So as quickly as possible, try to get to one of the corners. Everyone just does bottom left, usually. But you gotta be careful in case someone wants to drag green portal on top of the group and PvP. So I would recommend going into a corner away from the group. This is especially true if you're doing a public O3, because then you're gonna have more people that wanna PvP you. Once portal phase is over, he's gonna go directly into knife wall, so be ready for this. Oh, and also make sure you never stand on the middle left or the middle right wall once knife wall spawns, because this will pretty much insta kill you. Once you get Dama down to below 50% HP, he will go into his miasma phase. This phase can be very hard for new players and will most likely parse you, make you nexus and maybe even kill you the first time you do it. Dama is gonna spawn portals that section off the room into different quadrants. You wanna go bottom left, as this is where the main group always stays so you'll get more heals here. Eventually the portals start moving and you're gonna be forced to rotate. Your only job is to dodge the sickening green arrows the portal shoots out because not being able to heal is what is going to kill you in this phase. Also note that you can completely ignore the black shurikens, these silence you and deal like 75 damage. If you try to dodge everything, you're going to end up dodging nothing, so only focus on dodging the green sickening arrows. The biggest tip I can give you is to always try to be as far pushed up to the portals in front. This is going to give you time to stop and think for a moment, so you can plan your path ahead according to the shots in front of you. Another tip, if you're starting to get low, uh, really focus on dodging the second shots and the moment you get on second, heal up with Icors or health potions. I highly recommend practicing Miasma in the Just Dodge Practicer. Just click on Cube Base and start practicing. For the final phase for Dama, just micro dodge. Try not to move around too much because then you're gonna eat more shots than you need to. Oh, and try and stay away from the portals because these are the things that actually shoots the shots out. So when you're dodging, try and move towards the area without the portals. The green arrows still sicken you, so try to not get hit by those. And also after you kill Dama, the shots will linger for a bit, so try not to die after Dama is dead. Oh boy, next up is Luke, the most dangerous mini of them all. I'm going to try my best to guide you through it, but even still, you're probably gonna die a few times. When you enter the room, you want to stand in this spot. Luke has five different faces that he can choose from. I'm gonna show you how to deal with all of them, starting with the least dangerous faces. First off is the paralyzed face. For this one, you just need to walk back and forth like this, and you can just ignore the green shots even though they sicken. As long as you're dodging the paralyze, you're gonna be fine. If you don't have enough speed, you're gonna have to back up and start dodging in between the paralyzes instead. But I don't recommend doing this because you can easily get screwed over if Luke changes his face. For this whip face, you wanna go to the middle of the room and stand directly on the X where the two lines cross. For this one, you can also completely ignore the green shots. As long as you're standing in the safe spot and dodging the whips, you're gonna be fine. Then we have the carrot face. For this one, you just wanna walk left and right and dodge in between the gaps. Again, the green sickening shots can just be ignored as long as you dodge the main attack. Next, we have the boomerang phase. For this one, you just want to walk left and right like this and dodge the big boomeranging shots. If I didn't make it clear already, these boomerang, so you gotta dodge them when they're coming back too. Note that if you stand further away, it's gonna be easier to dodge the boomerangs. But whenever you back up to the middle of the room, you gotta always keep in mind that he could go into bombing phase next, where he will throw sickening bombs towards the middle of the room that really hurt. This phase is by far the most dangerous default phase that Luke does, and it's the reason for three of my deaths in Luke. Just so you know, there's a safe spot from the bombs on the left and the right side of the room. Just stand by the middle banner. But the way to actually do this phase is to stand inside this area and you want to dodge left and right when Luke shoots his carrot towards you. Just make sure you dodge the carrot at all cost because it deals a lot of damage. When Luke hits 75% HP, he will walk to the middle of the room and do rotation phase. It's possible to leech in the bottom left corner of this phase, 
but it's pretty easy to rotate, so you might as well stay in and get your guaranteed soul bond. When rotation phase starts, you want to go bottom left of Luke, and you want to be roughly two tiles away from him. When he starts shooting out shots, you want to start rotating clockwise, and make sure you're far enough in that you're not getting hit by the beams. You then want to switch directions every time he shoots out a new set of beams. Once he hits 50% HP, he's going to walk to the bottom of the room. It is very important that you rotate your screen by 180 degrees. I know it's annoying to rotate, but this is non-negotiable. Once he reaches the bottom of the room, he's going to do his 5 default phases again. The way to complete the phases is exactly the same as previously in the video, but now all the shots deal more damage. When he hits 25% HP, he's going to go to the middle of the room and do another rotation phase. There's going to be one more tentacle this time, but it doesn't really matter. The way to complete it is still the same. Group up bottom left and just start rotating. When he shoots out a new set of beams, you change directions. Bottom left is still a safe spot, so if you want, you can stand here and leech. When you kill Luke, just remember to reset your screen rotation. That way your minimap directions are correct for O3. Now let's talk about Luke counters. If at any point during the fight one of these orbs reaches him, it is going to activate one of his counters. The place he stands when the orb reaches him determines which counter you're going to get, and in total there are four counters. First counter is when he stands at the top of the room and an orb reaches him. There's going to be yellow shurikens that paralyze you, and lightning beams that deal 300 damage moving down the room. The way you do this phase is you move left and right so you're below the gap in the Paralyze. Then you wait for the lightning to strike and then you move up to the place the lightning just struck. Next up is the second counter. He's gonna do the second counter if an orb reaches him during the first rotation phase. If you see this happening, go to the left side of the room, wait for the lightnings to strike and then move to the banner and stand behind it like this. You're supposed to go back in and rotate, but this can be very hard, so I would recommend after a second counter just go to one of the corners. Then we have the third counter, which is basically just first counter but on steroids. This happens when an orb reaches him at the bottom of the room. The way to complete it is still the same though. You just want to walk left and right and find the gap in the paralyze, and then move up at the correct time. I highly recommend practicing this on the Just Dodge Practicer. Just click on Cylinder Hall and start practicing. Lastly, we have the fourth counter, which happens when Luke is standing in the middle and doing second rotation phase. This one is exactly the same as the second counter. The only difference is that everything deals more damage now. The same thing also applies here. It can be hard to join back into the rotation, so if you want, you can just go to one of the corners and leech. One final thing to note is that if you're standing in the middle of two lightnings, you're gonna be hit by both of them dealing 600 damage. So just be careful about this. And also don't be afraid to nexus in one of the counters. It's not worth losing your character. And with that, you should be able to complete all the mini bosses given enough practice. It's finally time to talk about Oryx 3. He will begin by standing in the middle of the room throwing a bomb at the closest person, making them drunk for 20 seconds. He will then go into one of his faces. He has a lot of faces, but it's not really important that you know all of them. Just try and always keep your distance from him, and this should be enough to get you through most faces. The best way to get damage in is to damage him when he's standing middle. Especially after he's done a few faces and walks back to the middle of the room for a reset. This is because he's vulnerable for a few seconds while he indicates what phase he's going into. But you gotta be ready to back out instantly when you see him shoot or move towards you. As long as you're ready to back out, getting damage mid is actually pretty safe. Whenever you're not mid dealing damage, you wanna try and stay within this general area. The main thing is just to not be too close to the wall, because this is gonna limit your escape routes. I pretty much never go to the walls unless I specifically need to dodge something, because staying inside this area is just way safer. If you're in a good group, you will sometimes be able to damage cap Oryx 3. If this happens, he will either go into a stagger or a guard, depending on which face he was doing. 
If he gets staggered, he will fall to the floor like this, and he will be vulnerable and you can deal a lot of damage. But if he's guarding, he will hold his shield up like this, and do not shoot him when he's holding up his shield like this, because if your group deals too much damage to him while he's holding his shield up, he will counter and give one of these debuffs for 30 seconds. Not very good. When Oryx hits 80% HP, he's gonna walk back to the middle of the room and do his dominance phase. Basically, he's gonna spawn four portals that shoot out pet stasis shots, and they're gonna move around and shoot while Oryx is doing his regular phases. Try and never stand directly on top of the portals because this is gonna deal a lot of damage. When he hits 60% HP, he will go back to the middle and start his dance phase. He's gonna spawn bomb artifacts that rotate around the room. Try to avoid the areas that have the artifacts because the damage they deal is gonna add up quick. Basically, you wanna try and stand inside the purple lines like I'm doing here. And make sure you still don't stand on the portals because they will still mess you up. I've seen a lot of people die from getting ran over by portals. Standing on top of this portal, for example, would have dealt 600 damage instantly. When Oryx hits 50% HP, he will go into his exalted form. He will turn silver and gold, and all of his shots will deal significantly more damage. But they're still the same faces as before, so if you made it this far, you shouldn't have to worry too much. Next up is the infamous Celestial. When Oryx hits 40% HP, he'll go to the middle, and the room will go dark. This means you gotta get ready for Celestial. There's a bunch of different ways to complete this phase, and everybody has their preferences, but I highly recommend that you try my method because, in my opinion, this is one of the easiest ways to complete it. Just note that Celestial can be different from run to run, because Celestial has a few variations. Okay, so let's begin breaking it down. First, reset your screen rotation and start below him. He's then going to move away from you and circle around to the left side. Once he comes into vision again, you want to start moving away from him towards the bottom right. He's then going to shoot his first set of shotguns here, and then he's going to shoot his second set of shotguns here. Your job is to look at where the shots are going, and find the gap in between them. It is very important that you dodge these two sets of shotguns first, because these are the shotguns that are going to reach you first. Once you're safely lined up from these two first set of shotguns, you can start dodging the shotguns that are gonna come from above you. It is very important that you prioritize dodging the Oryx shotguns, because just getting hit by two of these shotguns is enough to kill you. You can pretty much just completely ignore the pet stasis shots, because they only deal 200 damage, which can easily be healed up by using one I-Core. Some things to note is that you never ever want to stand on top of this portal when it comes around because it will insta-pop you, so never stand too close to the wall when the portal comes around. I highly, highly, highly recommend practicing this on the Just Dodge Practicer, but for this one, however, you want to set it to hard mode, and you want to try to survive at least 44 seconds. If you're able to do 44 seconds in this Practicer, you should be able to complete Celestial in-game. If you're still having trouble with Celestial, I'm gonna link my old video I made about Celestial down in the description below. It doesn't have commentary, but it has a bit of information that I left out in this tutorial. So if you're still feeling like you're struggling with Celestial, I recommend you watch that video also. When Celestial is over, he's gonna go to the middle of the room and start shooting shotguns in all directions. Notice that the pet stasis portals will also stop shooting, so this is how you know you completed Celestial. Eventually, he will stop shooting, and he's gonna go into a stagger. So you wanna go in and get as much damage as possible to guarantee your soulbound. But you're not done yet, because after Celestial, he's gonna start teleporting before each phase. This makes things a lot more dangerous, and I highly recommend that you try your best to stay on the other side of the room. You wanna use your quest icon and your minimap to determine where Oryx is, and you wanna stay as far away from him as possible. However, with that being said, you still want to try and keep yourself inside this area, because if you're standing on a wall and he teleports to you, uh, you're kinda screwed. Eventually, he will reach 20% HP and go into heavens. It's the same teleporting doo-doo that we all hate, just with added beams to ruin your day. But seriously though, it's not as bad as it sounds. You just want to time when you cross beams properly, 
and if Oryx is chasing you, just completely ignore the beams and run straight through. You would rather tank a 200 Heavens beam than to tank like 2-3 shots from Oryx. Remember that pretty much all shots from Oryx deals more than 200 damage. I just want to give some final tips for some of the phases. For Cosmos, make sure you're not standing on the red dot, and it can be very hard to see the red dots if they're on the carpet. In Outer Rotates, if he ever gets too close to you and you're in danger of getting ran over, you can hug the wall and tank one shot. Oh, and the shots also come out from one tile in front of him, so you definitely don't want to be too close to him. Finally, when Oryx reaches 5% of his max HP, the fight is finally over. Just make sure that you're not dying from the beams that are crumpling the arena. You do not want to die after O3 is dead. With that being said, I really hope this helped, and I wish you good luck on your O3s. Thank you for watching.